Hello there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today we're doing an advanced geometry nodes tutorial because I haven't done that in a minute, uh, where we are going to scatter stickers around any object. I'm just using Suzanne in this case, um, but you can see I can change the distribution and these stickers not only don't overlap, like they have like layering to them, uh, but they conform to the surface, uh, no matter if it's on the underside, the top side, whatever. And it turns out this is actually quite complicated to do. So. I just want to say before we begin, if you're not really savvy on geometry nodes, I wrote a book called Introduction to Geometry Nodes, link in the description, uh, where you can learn the basics of geometry nodes and hopefully understand this a bit better. Although I do need to write a sequel called uh, Intermediate in Geometry Nodes. But uh, you can see, yes, there's a lot of nodes and especially some nodes we haven't touched much like accumulate field and stuff like that. Uh, let's begin. So. Yeah, didn't even save. <laughs> okay, uh, so we're going to begin by starting off with an object. This can be any object. I'm just going to use Suzanne, Control-2 to smooth it out, and apply that modifier. Okay, this is our source object. And we are going to turn this into a geometry nodes object. So if I sever this, you don't see the monkey, etc. Our goal is to scatter stickers on this. The way I want to do that is I want to make these patches, these grids that are distributed over uh, the surface that kind of conform or shrink wrap to it that, you know, satisfy a couple conditions. And then on those grids, I project the sticker texture. That's kind of like the idea. And you, you'll see what that means in a second. So what I want to do is I want to start by distributing some points on our monkey. So it could be like that. And uh, don't worry, it's not every point is going to turn into a sticker. You're going to see there's actually some issues that arise and we're going to need to cull some of these uh, but on each of these i want to instance basically a sticker patch so i'm going to instance on points and we are going to instance a grid making sure that the rotations line up to the normal just like that so the way you want to think about this and i'm just going to add a parameter for the size of this so you can uh, control the size of these patches the way you want to think about this is we have a bunch of grids on the surface. They're not exactly, they're tangent to it, but they're not wrapping to it. You see, it's kind of like flat grids. So I'm actually gonna increase the resolution of these grids so they're 10 by 10. So if we look at this, you can see each grid has a 10 by 10 geometry. And we need that because we're gonna shrink wrap it to the surface again. So I'm just gonna move this over here. Um, the first thing I wanna do is I want to, I guess shrink wrap it is the idea. Right? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm first going to make them go a bit out of the surface because you can't shrink wrap when it's exactly on the surface. So what do I mean by this? I mean, I'm going to set position to our original points that we distributed along the normal. So that's just going to expand them outwards. And we're going to do that by a very, very tiny factor. So I'm going to scale this by like 0.1. So uh, you can see this is what they were before, and now they're just expanded a bit outwards, and then we can project them back in. So to do that, I'm going to turn these into actual geometry. So now they're 10 by 10 grids, and we are going to ray cast. That is how we do our shrink wrapping. Again, ray casting is basically shooting out rays and seeing where they hit, and we're going to use that position. Again, get the book if you, if you don't know what's going on, although I don't think ray casting's in it because it's a beginner topic. But... Uh, what we want to do is we want to project on our monkey as the target geometry. We're projecting on the original monkey. And uh, which is the ray direction? It's the normal, right? But it's the negative normal. And I'll explain that in a second. So we're going to take the normal, uh, multiple, scale it by negative one. So each part of the monkey has a normal. If we take the negative normal, it's actually pointing inwards towards the mesh. And that's where we want to project it. We want to go inwards. So... I'm going to scale this by negative one as the ray direction. And then what we can do is we can set position to these realized instances and say, uh, move it to where the hit position is. And you can see that shrinks wrap, shrink wraps it to the surface. Also, you can see it gives us very stretched geometry, like right here. Um, and some of these stickers are good, some of them are not. I'm going to bring down the density so you can see. So you can see here's a good patch right here. But then we have some patches that have a lot of stretching. And in fact, uh, you can see right here, um, I believe if a position doesn't hit, like if it's casting a ray and it doesn't hit anything, I believe it's sent to the middle. So I'm not sure about that, but if we do a is hit for the selection, yeah, you can see now we're getting 
a bit more of what what's going on here. Um, but we can actually keep that uh, because we can actually see how stretched these are and use that information to call them out, okay? So what I want to do now, I'm just going to get rid of this so we just look at the uh, patches. I want to delete geometry um, under certain conditions. So if a patch is too stretched, uh, we want to get rid of it. Well, how do we know if a patch is stretched? Well, it looks like it's stretched. In other words, the edges of it go very, very far. That's how we describe it. So if we can find like the total edge, edge length of each patch in some sense and see if it's like way bigger than it was before, like some of the edges are super stretched, we can filter them out using that. Now there is no edge length node, but we can use uh, edge vertices to make our own. So edge vertices looks at the two vertices of the endpoints of each edge. And what we can do is very simply take a vector math node and calculate the distance. And this is the edge length, okay? But I somehow want to calculate the sum of these edge lengths for each patch, okay? Well, when you hear the word sum, you should think of the accumulate field node, which we don't use very often, but what it does is it takes a field and it sums it up everywhere. Uh, in this case, on the edges. And we wanna look at this total. Um, the issue here is it's gonna give us the total of all the edges for all the patches. We somehow need to say each one, each patch has its own group ID. And here's the trick. Uh, even though, I mean, you could actually bring back the um, index or uh, even fancier, uh, we can use a mesh island node, which uh, looks at each island of geometry, each disconnected patch, and it indexes them. So we can take this island index and use it as the group ID. So what's happening here? Each patch, we are summing up the edge lengths, okay? And I want to take this before and after we do our deformation. So I'm going to do the same thing except, I'm gonna use this right here, I accept instead of the distance, we wanna capture the edge length before we do our stretching, I believe. So we want to capture this attribute before we raycast. So we raycast and we set position. Before that happens, we're gonna take the distance, we're gonna connect that in here, and we might need to set this to edge, I'm not sure. We'll see what happens and we'll connect this here. So in other words, we have the accumulated edge length field for after, after the set position, where we're gonna do this delete geometry, and then we captured it before. And what I wanna say, and it's actually a very simple expression, I wanna say, take these totals and compare them. In other words, divide them. And if one is like within some span, like if, if the stretching is above 1.5, 50% bigger, uh, we call that out. So let's see what this looks like. So I'm gonna delete geometry. I'm gonna connect that to the selection. And now we just need to change this filter distance. And you can see as I increase this, um, it's only keeping the patches that don't, you know, that aren't fucked <laughs> is basically it. But if we make this threshold too big, you can see we're introducing these ones that are super stretched. So really you wanna pick a number that's suitable. Uh, 1.6 is a bit risky. Uh, but it seems to work here, but if we change the seed, yeah, okay, it seems to work in most cases. And you can see our patches are actually on the surface. So what we can do now is we are going to join this with the original geometry. And it's a little hard to see what's going on because they're like perfectly overlaid on top of this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is after we filtered them is I'm going to expand them back outwards. So I'm going to set position offset it by the normal, which again, expands them outwards. But we do this by a tiny amount. So I'm gonna scale this, and you can see that's kind of like the stretching here. Um, although, if we stretch all of them by like a tiny number, like 0.02, yes, they're above the surface, but some of them are gonna intersect, uh, especially if we view it like this. You can see some patches are very much intersecting. So what we wanna do is we want to offset this on the normal like we're doing, but by random numbers for each patch. Um, and that sounds difficult to do, but not really, because we just take a random value. So this is how much we're stretching it by, and now it's doing it for every point, so we get this kind of messy thing. Uh, what we wanna do is we wanna take an ID and say for each patch, give it its own ID or index. 
And I think we can just use the mesh or the island index from before. And there we go. Now some patches go far, some of them don't. And I'm gonna have the minimum be zero and the maximum be like 0.1. So now you can see these patches aren't overlaid. There's kind of like a layering system to them. And I wanna keep this as low as possible uh, while they're still not intersecting. Um, something to notice here is as we increase the patch size, it will uh, automatically uh, filter out the ones that do work and don't work. And uh, let's do a bit of randomization while we're at it. Uh, we instance these. There's no reason we can't randomize the rotation and scale. So not every sticker is the same orientation or the same, um, the same scale. So I'm going to add a random vector, a random vector. Uh, to this, uh, make sure this is only on the z-axis, so we're just rotating these patches. Although, I guess we do want to rotate them off the normal. So let's think about that. I think the issue is if we rotate it here, it's just going to get rid of some patches. It's just going to be on the z-axis. Uh, what we could do is we could do like an align Euler to vector. If this doesn't work, then we won't do it. Um, but I'm thinking we connect this here. We add this rotation on the Z, Y, I don't know, to be honest. My idea was we just add some like rotation here, which seems to kind of work. Like it's rotating off of the normal. I just don't know if it's supposed to be X, Y, or Z. It kind of looks like it's stretching. So what we could do here is we could be a bit sloppy. Uh, we can add a um, random rotation uh, to this, which is going to get rid of a lot of the candidates. However, we can just increase the density and get those back. Okay, so it's a bit sloppy, but it works. Uh, basically, it's a survival of the fittest in some sense. And we also want to randomize the scale. So instead of 0 to 1, let's have it go from 0.5 to 1.5. So we can have big stickers and tiny stickers. And as we change the seed, you can see we're getting different patches. And sometimes we're gonna get glitchy patches like this. If you wanna get rid of those, you can also do a filtering, a second filtering based off face area. Uh, but that's kind of beyond the scope of this. I mean, it's not much different than what we just did, okay? So if we now look at this, we have our patches, or really we don't see them. So what I wanna do is I wanna make a material. So I'm gonna set material here and here. So this is for the monkey and for the patches and I'm going to make two uh, materials. So this is gonna be monkey material, and this is gonna be sticker material. And what I wanna do is the monkey gets the monkey material, the sticker gets the sticker material. Look at this, this is a pretty complicated node network. Again, get the book. <laughs> um, what we are going to do is now that this is uh, filtered by material, let's see if that's the case, yeah, the stickers get their own color. Uh, what I wanna do is, first of all, I wanna make this more like visible. So I'm gonna change to cycles and also add an HDRI so we can see what's going on here. And now my computer is gonna start with the fan. There we go. So now we can actually see our patches that are perfectly conformed to the surface, by the way, uh, filtered by edge length. And none of them are, I mean, they're overlapping, but there's a layering to them. Uh, what I want to do is I want to project a texture, but we don't actually have a coordinate system, right? We'd like something like generated or object coordinates, but it's not centered on these planes. Uh, so what I recommend is making a coordinate system. Uh, very simply, we take the original grid and we say store an attribute. That attribute is a vector called position. So we're storing the position of each grid and we are going to call that uh, chords or any name really. So if we view this, if we view this, how do I want to do this? I want to view the attribute, but I haven't done, I haven't, I want to look at the position based on this geometry. So you can see here we have a, a coordinate system. And what we should see is if we take this viewer and bring it all the way out here, hmm, doesn't seem to like that. Oh, because the position's being updated. Either way. The point is we stored the position back here, so it should work. So what I'm thinking is that now if we add an attribute to this uh, material and we call it chords, the same thing, 
you're now gonna see each one has its uh, very same coordinate system. This is perfect because if we now bring in an image texture, and I just have a sticker uh, for this, you could have um, done a collection of stickers, by the way. Uh, let's see, so I think we're not seeing it because it's a bit offset. We need to center these by 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and also we need to scale these down. This is just because we need to change our coordinate system to kind of be like a UV coordinate. And I'm going to set this to clip so we don't get any repeats. And now we get the sticker. And again, uh, you could have done a bunch of image textures or instead of the grid, done a collection of grids and projected it that way. So you have a collection of stickers. Either way, I'm going to use this as the principal BSDF and connect the alpha to the alpha. And now we have stickers here. And uh, like we saw, this is completely procedural and we can increase the uh, density of the stickers. Of course, it's gonna accumulate in some areas where it satisfies the conditions. Like at the top, it's very easy for the edges to not stretch. And in some areas, it's hard. But you can see we change that, we can change the seed, and that is how we cover our object in stickers. Of course, if you get a glitchy result, you can always uh, just pick a different seed. So, there you go. Change back to scene two. Uh, there you go. Uh, very complicated tutorial, a lot of new concepts, and I know I keep pushing the book, but I'm very proud of it. Uh, if you want to get yourself familiarized with geometry nodes, there's a link in the description for this book that I wrote, either on Blender Market or on Amazon, uh, where you can uh, learn the basics. And I'm going to write a sequel called Intermediate to Geometry Nodes, where it levels up and then advanced in geometry nodes, etc. Uh, so hopefully you learned something in this tutorial, and I will see you on the next one.